in this video i'm going to demonstrate or i'll be discussing about the excretion now we might want to record to say that excretion is simply the process by which metabolic uh, waste are removed from the body of an organism so this is so important so that uh, you maintain a constant uh, internal environment now uh, there are quite a number of uh, organs that are involved in excretion or maybe the things that we call excretory organs and uh, these are just like the liver that will excrete the uh, the bowel pigment we've got the lungs that will be able to excrete the carbon dioxide we've got the kidneys that are able to excrete excess salts urea as well as excess water now so in today's video i'll be looking at the kidney itself right so uh, we're going to look at uh, what the urinary system is made up. So, in short, our video today will be about the urinary uh, system. All right. So, basically, the urinary system is made up of the following uh, components. Number one, we've got the kidneys right so we have the kidneys uh we also have the ureter ureters or rather we've got the urinary bladder okay last but not the least we have the urethra so now these are the components that i'll be talking about in this video as we discuss on the urinary system so now you might want to recall that to say that um, the kidneys they remove nitrogenous waste from your body and um, it also filters your blood such as urea and water so this will help to regulate the water content and also the chemical composition of the body fluid right so now uh, the blood that is entering the kidney is filtered that is what is happening so today i'm going to concentrate on the kidney itself Uh, sorry for that wrong spelling. Yeah. So we're going to concentrate on the kidney itself. Now, like I was saying to say that uh, in the kidney, what happens is that there is removal of metabolic waste. Now, let me just draw a structure of the kidney just to help us understand what is happening. Okay, so um, suppose this is our kidney. All right, now this is just a on how a kidney looks like it's just a b-shaped uh, something like that so now suppose this is our kidney let me just use a different marker okay all right so to do that i'll demonstrate blood coming inside and here i'll demonstrate blood going outside all right so now to label this you might want to know that this is is the renal artery and this the other one is the renal vein right so that is what we have so i have the kidney i have the renal artery and the renal vein so this is coming from the vena cava and this is coming from the iota now we might want to know that uh arteries they carry oxygenated blood while veins they carry deoxygenated blood and here what you see it is just the ureter Okay. So this is the ureter, and um, the surface here that you see, the, uh, this is called the kidney capsule, right? So I have the kidney capsule, and here inside, this is what we call the cortex, right? That is what we call the cortex, and this part, that is what we call the pelvis of the kidney, All right? So now let us concentrate on how the structure of this kidney is. We'll look at into details when we look at the nephron of the kidney. Now, like 
like I said to, I mean, like I mentioned uh, earlier to say that kidneys are responsible for the removal of nitrogenous waste from the blood, such as urea and water, right? So these, um, what happens is that it will just help regulate uh, the body uh, fluid or maybe the chemical composition of the body fluids. That is the function of the kidney. So blood that is uh, that that enters the kidney is filtered, right? Uh, and uh, water in some small uh, molecules such as glucose, amino acids, urea, and amino salts are forced outside the kidneys uh, through the tubes and also the red blood cells and platelets. Uh, what happened is that they are not filtered because of them being large uh, in in their structure or maybe in their composition, right? So what happens is uh, the let me just use a different marker again. So what happened here is that we have blood that is coming inside our kidney, all right? So this blood is coming through the iota and it goes to the renal arteries. So this blood is made up of, well, number one, this, uh, the composition is that it is oxy oxygenated, uh, oxygenated, all right? It is oxygenated blood, then it is carrying uh, red blood cells, okay? It is carrying platelets, it has uh, salts, it has glucose, okay? It has water and other minerals as well as uh, hormones. So what happens is that when this blood enters the kidney, inside the kidney, there are nephron that will uh, be able to filter this blood. Now, like I was saying to, to say that small molecules such as glucose, urea, so this blood also one thing is that the reason why it is entering the kidney is that it carries the urea, all right? So what happens is that this blood that is entering the kidney is filtered, all right, inside the nephrons. Then after that, the, the blood that remains, all right, is taken to the, is taken to the, um, is taken to the renal vein. And so the, the blood that comes out through the renal vein, it will have big, big, big molecules such as red blood cells, right? Uh, platelets, okay? Plasma proteins, okay? Plasma protein. It will also have even uh, white blood cells because these are big in nature. So that is what is happening with this structure of the kidney. Now we have the ureter here, right? We have the ureter and what it is, is that um, the, the, the urine, all right, when uh, it enters the ureter. So after the filtration, the urine will come through the ureter and it goes to the bladder. So the ureter is connected to the bladder. So the bladder acts as the temporal uh, storage of urine. Now, all right, so let us look at how the filtration of this blood that is coming through the uh, renal artery is done and how the blood that is coming through the renal uh, vein is maintained. So let us just look at the nephron. So this was about how the kidney uh, it is in the, uh, the labeling part. Now let us look at in more detail some of the interesting part about the kidney. So in short, what we're gonna talk about is that we're going to talk about the nephron. Okay, now let us draw our attention to this diagram that you see here. So this is just simply a basic structure of a nephron. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to label this. All right, so let me indicate so that you know what I'm dealing with. All right, so uh, this is the nephron. Okay, so this is the nephron. Uh, can you see that? Okay, this is the nephron. Uh, yeah, so this is the nephron. That is what I've just uh, put there. All right. So what I'm going to do is that uh, ideally first I'm going to label this nephron. Now we looked at the structure of the kidney, right? You saw the structure of the kidney and it's uh, being shaped and something like that. So this is what is found inside those kidneys. So there are units of these, a thousand of them in one kidney, right? So these are the guys that does the job. Now, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna first label. Uh, I'm gonna label this structure, right? So I'll start from this. All right. So I'm gonna demonstrate something. Okay. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate something. So what is happening is, 
there's blood that is coming, all right? It is coming where? So it is coming from the renal. I showed you about the renal artery and I did to, in, to indicate to say the renal artery, I talked about what the, uh, the blood that is coming through the, the renal artery into the kidney is composed of, right? And what we have here is the blood that is going down that side and we have the blood here that is being filtered. All right, and we have something that has been filtered that is going again down there, right? So this is simply the movement of these substances. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between the blood that is uh, coming this side and the blood that is going this side and the blood that is also being filtered uh, coming down. So before we do that, I want to just uh, label this. To start with, I'll start with the same uh, end here, right? So this one is what we call... Uh, this is what we call the afflent. Okay, this is what we call the afferent end. All right. So simply, this is what is called the afferent end. All right. And this side. So I was labeling this part. And this part is called the afflent. All right. So what it means is, afferent means to, I mean, getting inside or entering. Then afferent. This is meaning the outlet. Right. So that is what is happening uh, between these fluid that is coming. So from now on, I'll be using fluid. So blood is fluid, you know that, right? So uh, only that we call it blood because of its composition, right? So that is what is happening. So I've labeled that. And again, I'm going to label something very special here. So this part is what we call the glomerulus. All right so this is the go i mean this is the glomerulus you can see that and here this part is what we call the bowman's capsule All right bowman's uh, capsule All right so this is the bowman's capsule and here what i have this is called the renal tube i'm not going to use uh difficult terms uh, so i'll just label it as renal tube remember this is just basics of what you need to know and here down here the thing that you know uh you see here this is called uh the uh the loop of henel right this is the loop of henel and i'm gonna label this as the collecting duct okay so this is the collecting duct so uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, in a simple way of labeling the nephron. I've only labeled this part because this, these are the parts that I want to focus on explaining how the filtration of, uh, how the filtration of uh, blood is done. All right. So we have the blood that is coming inside. Should I indicate that? All right. So this is blood. All right. So now the composition in nature of this blood is that pay attention to what i'm saying the composition of this blood is that one it is coming from the renal artery so its composition will be like this blood is oxygenated all right this blood is coming at a high um, pressure this blood consists of glucose urea uh, excess mineral salts or excess salts excess water uh, it has got red blood cells it has got uh, platelets it has, uh, it has got uh, plasma protein it has got even other uh, substances in it all right so the only different uh with this composition is that their characteristics and their sizes that is what is the only uh different so when the blood now reaches the glomerulus what is going to happen is that this glomerulus is called the tubes in the glomerulus are called all right so it just has to increase the surface area for uh, for diffusion, right? So now the glomerulus, what happens is that it has got smaller pores that will allow small uh, substances or molecules to diffuse into the Bowman's capsule, right? So this is just works like a cheese strainer, you know, you're trying to uh, to filter whatever, or I mean the tea maybe, for example, all right? So that is what is really happening here. So there's different insides of these uh, molecules that I've mentioned that are composed from the blood that is coming from the efferent end, all right? So what is happening is that large molecules such as glucose, uh, urea, uh, uh, salts, and uh, excess water will diffuse through the 
glomerulus and it will go down into the Bowman's capsule. Then it will go down to the uh, renal tube until it goes just like that. You can see this how the tube is. Now, I'm going to explain some of the steps or here or how the filtration or the production of urine is done. All right. So ideally, I've already explained the first part. All right. So what is happening here? There is what we call ultra filtration. Um, yeah, so there's what is happening here is ultra filtration, right? Let me just indicate that here, okay? Ultra, you can see that, right? Ultra filtration. Sometimes it's called glomerulus filtration or pressure filtration is the one and same thing. So there is uh, a pressure. So I said there's pressure. So that is why it is called pressure filtration because the blood that is coming from the renal artery is usually at a high pressure. So has to uh, facilitate in the diffusion or in the filtration of these substances. Now molecules such as glucose, should I also indicate those? So molecules here, what happening is that molecules such as uh, Okay, this is the chemical formula for glucose molecules such as uh, glucose water uh, urea all right and also some salts uh, will diffuse through this uh, glomerulus and it will go into the uh, the bowman's capsule all right so why because these are small molecules hence they'll pass but large molecules like um RBCs, red blood cells, or rather white blood cells, uh, platelets, uh, what else? Plasma protein, uh, and other large molecules that are maybe there in the blood. What happens that they will, they will not able to diffuse down through the Bowman uh, the Bowman's capsule. Hence, these are large molecules, so they will go down the efferent end until they go in this tube until they go back to the renal. Uh, they go back to the renal uh, tube, right? So this is going to the renal, uh, sorry, to the renal vein, right? Until they go back to the renal vein. That is what is happening. So now we have this fluid that has entered here, right? So the fluid that has been collected now in the Bowman's capsule, right? So the fluid that has been collected here in the Bowman's capsule that is entering down there, it is what we refer to as a glomerular filtrate okay so this fluid here all right i'm referring to this fluid here is what we call glomerular filtrate all right that is what is called the glomerular filtrate so what is a gro uh, the glomerular uh, filtrate this is the uh, fluid that has been collected in the bowman's capsule and it is composed of these uh, molecules so what happens that this now it will go down into the renal tubule all right so here i was explaining on ultra filtration now i'll go to the next stage of the filtration or i'll go to the next stage in the uh, what's this in the nephron all right so now this is now where we come to the uh, renal tubule so now in the renal tubule what is happening is that there is selective reabsorption all right so there is what we call selective there is selective uh, reabsorption all right so selective reabsorption takes place in the renal tube what is happening is here, uh, here is that remember glucose is very useful to your body and it is one of the most uh, use it for substances that has diffused alongside with other molecules down into the Bowman's capsule. Now, in the renal tube, is that there should be the selective reabsorption, selecting all the glucose. So, I mean, that all the I mean, all the glucose should be taken back to the blood. No glucose should be passed through into the collecting duct because once we establish that in someone's urine there's a presence of even a single molecule of glucose that is a problem right it's a condition you know someone is sick someone that they're not feeling okay uh, there's there's like a problem somewhere all right so the glucose should be collected in the uh, I mean, rather, should be selected back and taken back into the bloodstream, right? So by the surrounding uh, blood vessels here or capillaries, the glucose should be able to, set, to be selected back into the bloodstream. That is what is happening under selective reabsorption. Let me even in, uh, indicate this same 
glucose right so this should be taken back and now since the, uh, the selective uh, reabsorption has taken place this fluid will continue going down okay it will continue going down until we reach the rhino uh, the loop of henel all right so in the loop of henel what is simply happening is that there is another stage here that we call osmolegulation Right, so this is the uh, this is the loop of uh, Henel. So what is happening here is that we have osmolegulation. Right, so osmolegulation, the word osmo just means water. All right, osmosis. Yeah, just like that. So water. So now in the uh, in the loop of Henel, what are we doing? We are balancing the water levels. All right. Remember, we said that that there are some water that has gone. Uh, alongside in the glomerular filtrate right so water is there so excess water should be taken out we don't need excess water uh, there's a certain amount of water that should be in your body and there's a certain amount of salt that your body needs to use other than that whatever exceeds will become waste no need for the body to use them so it is uh, excreted alongside with urea so what is happening under the loop of henna is that do we have osmolegulation and this is whereby we are balancing uh, the water levels now to do so i forgot to mention when i looked at the structure of the kidney to say that uh your kidney the outside of your kidney the upper side it contains an organ that is called the adrenal gland now those adrenal gland they sec uh, they secrete uh, or they produce the hormones that is called the antidiuretic uh, hormone or the vasociprine hormones so the antidiuretic hormone abbreviated as ad this is the hormone that is responsible in balancing uh, the water levels in your body so that is basically what is happening in the renal tube so after that after we have the balancing of water this fluid will continue going until in the collecting duct now what are we having in the collecting duct ladies and gentlemen pay particular attention these are examination questions that you need to take care of all right so what is happening now in the collecting that what has been collected number one is urea all right which is the uh, nitrogenous waste that should be not allowed to live in your blood we have excess uh, excess sorts and we've got excess water okay so this is all i mean all together this is the what they made i mean they make up the urine all right the urine is made up of that so this is what is going to be collected in the collecting data uh, duct rather sorry is the thing that is being collected in the collecting uh, data so whenever you've been asked all right don't say water don't say salt salt what water what Salt is a useful substance, I mean substance or mineral in your body. Your body needs the salt. It, I mean, it needs the sodium, all right? It needs uh, the, these, the sodiums, it needs water. So don't just say water. If they tell you to say what are the, some of the substances that will be collected in the collecting data, uh, duct rather, sorry, I keep on saying data. Maybe probably my phone needs a data. Um, so if I say, I mean, if they ask you, don't just say salts, don't say water, water, what, salt, what, yeah? So please put excess, all right, put excess. We'll look at the dialysis machine and we'll get to appreciate how all these substances are balanced in the dialysis machine whenever there's a kidney failure. So now don't say salt, don't say water, water, what, salt, uh, uh, salt, what, salt, 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 okay, salt, salt, what, what, what? yeah <laughs> so i just take care of that so ladies and gentlemen uh no i missed one point okay so this is what is just happening then we've got what uh we've got another process that is called secretion all right we've got the other process that is simply called secretion all right so like i said forgotten to mention one so so this is now uh this now process is what we call uh uh, secretion now secretion is just the process of uh, removing urea from okay of uh, correcting urea in the collecting that or removing a uh, urea from the collecting that now what is happening is that let me write that 
okay so this is what i was explaining so the the urine now will pass through and it will go down the bladder for temporal storage right we know the bladder right yeah for temporal storage it is elastic we know it it has got some uh, splinter muscles yep and the bladder is connected from the urethra where the urine now will be passed out to the outside environment of your body so ladies and gentlemen that was about the nephron the basics of the nephron i uh, hope you've enjoyed today's lesson uh, if you do please don't forget to give me yeah a thumb don't forget to uh, to to comment if at all there is where you feel yeah there's there should be you know we keep on updating these videos there's always there's uh there's new information outside there so yeah don't forget to do that ladies and gentlemen class uh this video is brought to you by uh distinction education hub uh also this video is brought to you by new learning lab and research as well as it is being made possible by ik fume network last but not the least i would like to appreciate all the members of staffs at distinction education hub this has been me your tutor ik god bless you and see you in my next video all right guys so uh what you're seeing here is just a simple structure of the dialysis machine now whenever we talk about the dialysis machine it means there's a kidney failure right so what causes kidney failure or what is a kidney failure so basically kidney failure this is when the kidney fails all right really is that a proper definition of a kidney failure anyways that is the definition but anyways to just sound a bit of uh because if it i mean it is like to say define um Anyways, a kidney failure or kidney failure. So the kidney fails to do the function that the previous video talked about or the function of, of the nephron, meaning that the kidney is, I mean, is unable to filter blood, is unable to do selective reabsorption, is, it is unable to do whatever the normal kidney is able to do. And we know that the kidney is a very vital organ to your body as it filters or it removes tox, uh, toxic waste such as urea from your body we said urea staying in your blood it's very dangerous it's poisonous it's a very 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 dangerous uh, substance so hence should go through the kidneys and it should be secreted uh, i mean uh excreted out now when i say excreted out it sounds like i'm repeating one i mean myself all right it should be uh get rid of uh through the process of excretion in your body now this is just what a dialysis machine will look at and the dialysis machine performs the functions that are similar to what the nephron does we had uh ultra filtration selective reabsorption we have all, the, uh, all those kind of so similarly the uh, the dialysis machine is made to have the features of the nephron all right so it is a nephron now in an artificial way all right so uh, what it means is that what you're seeing here is just how the dialysis machine is it is not exactly like that all right but i'm just interesting uh, interested in presenting to you what this machine has and what this machine is all about right so um there's something that i forgot to mention here uh, to, to indicate here yeah so that is what here you're seeing so the thing that you're seeing this is a tube all right you saw some tubes in the nephron right yeah so similarly so here what you see inside the surrounding of this tube of the fluid so i'll just do that so this is the fluid uh in the dialysis machine so we've got the dialysis fluid in all right so i'll indicate this as the uh dialysis fluid okay in all right so this is where the dialysis uh, fluid uh, gets inside the fluid and this is the dialysis uh, the dialysis fluid uh, out all right so then this here inside this is called the dialysis uh, the dialysis fluid all right so we have the dialysis fluid and this is called the dialysis tube right so now uh, these are the parts of the dialysis machine and those are the parts of 
uh, uh, yeah, on, and these are some of the components of the dialysis machine. So usually kidney failure can be due to a number of factors, accidents, uh, diseases, uh, injuries, and so on, so on. Even um, diet, you know, uh, smoking, such kind of uh, such kind of factors can affect uh, the ability of your kidney to work. So basically, let's look at now. Uh, since I'm not yet finished to to labeling uh, this, so this is simply just the pump that will pump your blood inside, and this is a patient's blood. Uh, patient's blood that is going in or patient's blood that is connected to the artery right you remember we had the renal artery so this is exactly the same thing then this is again the patient's blood uh, blood the patient blood that is connected to, to your vein so usually when your blood goes in this tube okay it goes and comes out through your vein so it is connected through the use of a cannula in uh, I mean in patients so that is what is happening. Now let us look at the makeup of this dialysis machine. Number one, I talk to say we have got the fluid, all right, and we've got the tube. So I'll talk about the tube. So the way the tube, the dialysis ma uh, machine tube is that it is called, all right, the reason why it is called, it is to, it, to increase the light surface area, all right, for absorption or diffusion, all right, for, for diffusion. So it is to increase the um the large surface area for diffusion so meaning that your blood is getting inside now your blood uh the same way we looked at the blood that is coming from your renal artery the composition it's the same way the blood that is going inside the dialysis machine all right so number one is that the tube is called to increase the large surface area then number three is that this is partially permeable when we say partially permeable meaning it will allow some substances to diffuse outside the tube that is what we mean when you say it's partially permeable you, you well, we learned about these uh selectively permeable partially permeable in our first month of videos so um basically that is how this dialysis tube is made of then let me now jump to the liquid part to the dialysis fluid rather so the dialysis fluid it contains the following all right it contains sorts right it contains glucose yes i mean i mean the fluid let me use a different marker all right so the fluid will contain will contain this all right and it will contain water as well so these are in amount that is balanced all right so the glucose in the dialysis uh, fluid is balanced such that there will be no movement all right we define diffusion as the movement of um particles from a legion of higher concentration to a legion of a lower concentration so usually the the glucose that are in the dialysis fluid is in a good amount of concentration so that it doesn't i mean so that the glucose in your blood is not getting outside all right outside into the uh, the renal i mean outside into the dialysis tube going into the dialysis fluid and at the same time those there's no uh, the glucose that is in the dialysis fluid going inside the renal tube to mix with your blood so there's that concentration right so there's that equilibrium when we talk about the glucose all right so with the sorts they are also at least balanced all right but to the little amount such that there is also the diffusion of the sorts that in your blood getting into side i mean in the side of the dialysis fluid so that this sort also can be at the equilibrium so what is happening is that only urea okay so the the urea is i mean will be absent in the dialysis fluid because that is the essence why we are doing the dialysis machine we want to get rid of the you uh, are the urea that is in your blood we want to get rid of that poisonous substances so the urea now because there are small molecules also the way it works in the glomerulus that is how it is works working here so because again the urea it is in the zero amount uh, with regards to the dialysis machine so the urea in your blood is able to diffuse outside your your uh, i mean outside the renal tube maybe from your blood and it goes inside the renal i mean sorry inside the dialysis fluid so ladies and gentlemen uh, that is about the dialysis machine right so you have just to know what is happening here right so again the blood when it comes out it is connected to a patient's a blood vein and here this is what i have it's a pump that is just pumping this blood inside this tube so uh, that is 
I've got not much to talk about this, this homo, nah, homo dialysis machine, all right? So I have not much to talk about this uh, homo dialysis machine, but basically that is, in, uh, that is the basics of how the dialysis machine works, all right? So, um, so how can we maintain our kidneys? I mean, how can we maintain a healthy kidney? Number one is we should have, okay? Number one is that we should have a good uh, balanced diet, right? What we mean is that we avoid foods that will cause, or oh, that will bring about kidney failure. We should have also, okay, individual lifestyle. Exercise, they help the kidneys. Uh, taking enough water, okay, drinking a lot of water or enough water, right? Uh, quit smoking. Obama, yeah, quit smoking. Um, what else? Yeah, so quit, uh, quit smoking. Yeah, even alcohol intake. Right, we need to regulate that. So, ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the. Uh, these are some of the things that will help us to maintain a healthy kidney. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that has been me, Ismail of IK. On a friend explains this video is brought to you by distinction uh, education hub as well as no learning um, lab in research yeah see you in my next video